Alright guys, hope you're all keeping safe and having a great week. Today was a big state of the game. The devs revealed the PTS date, huge buffs coming to almost all weapons in the game, the removal of purple gear, vendor pass, and a lot more coming with TU10. If you want to support me further with a couple of extra rewards, you can on Patreon, the link below to that. With that said, drop a like if you enjoy this one, subscribe below for Division content, and let's begin. So as always guys, I've got my bullet points from uh, everything from today's state of the game, and there's a lot here guys, so I'm going to go through it and there's a lot of stuff coming, and I will give my comments to it in this video, and I'll probably do a, a follow-up video to this probably this Friday. So today we had Hamish, Yannick, and Nikki, and basically the, this state of the game was focusing on the TU-10 and the PTS that's coming. First, they had the priority alert. Um, so there was a maintenance yesterday. It was just a server side one, so there was no player facing fixes to that. Uh, they have come across some error codes in the raid. This is a high priority and this is still under investigation and they're hoping to have this fixed as soon as possible. Uh, there was some Foxtrot error improvements with Team 9.1, which appear to have been successful, but there are still some incidents and these are being continuously looked at to hopefully get resolved as soon as possible. Uh, there's been some comments on hit registration issues. Uh, the devs really need videos, but ideally the game logs uh, when this issue happens. Uh, ideally what they need is the date and the time, and that way they can go into your account and check the exact moment it happened uh, so they can try and find the fix for that. They then went on to just address the Ubisoft Terms of Service issue that's come up a lot recently. So Yannick said that it's Ubisoft-wide thing. Um, it's supposed to cover all games within their portfolio. Uh, but what's important is that there are some lines and some entries in those Terms of Service that are not compatible with the division, like helping lower level players to kind of power boost, etc. Uh, we've got, you know, the Shepherd system in the Division 2 for that very reason. Uh, they said this is not going to be a breach of the Division Terms of Service, so it's not going to be punishable by them. The same applies for grouping with uh, with cheaters if you're matchmaking. So if you matchmake into a cheater group, there's going to be no punishment. They're only after the actual cheaters themselves. So if you know, if you knowingly join a group or you join a group outside of matchmaking and then go into a group with cheaters, then that might be, I presume that might be punishable. They said that some of the Ubisoft rules as part of this new terms of service do contradict the division and they said just to re refer to the division code of conduct and as long as you abide by that then there'll be no issue. Hamish did bring up the conversation around content creators and they said as soon as they have more info on that they will let us know. If you didn't know, uh, the Ubisoft Terms of Service basically says that they own any content using their assets. So any content creator who creates anything on any of the Ubisoft assets basically becomes theirs and they can distribute it and use it as, as however they want to essentially. So there's that. Moving on to the actual good news though, is that the PTS is confirmed for release this Friday, May 22nd. Uh, devs hope a lot of people will log in and give good feedback on bugs, content, etc. This is P, uh, PC only. Uh, this is something they didn't do before where they had a PTS with previous updates and stuff and it's shown that it's actually really important they do it and they believe that's what the community want, which is why they're having it. Uh, how long is the PTS? Well, there's two phases planned currently, so that's two weeks, but it will all depend on feedback. If it all goes good, then it will be two weeks. If for whatever reason it's an absolute uh, mess, then it may go on longer than that, but they are planning only for those two weeks as of right now. The preload for the PTS will be available from 5 p.m. UK time tomorrow and the servers will go live on Friday at 2 p.m. CEST. And then they moved on to TU10 and what it's going to contain. So, firstly, what's the focus question mark? While they want to continue where they left off with later updates, TU9.1 and TU9, addressing some of the feedback from TU8. They started with TU9 and TU9.1 to address that. TU10 is a larger pass on those things. There will be a big bug fixing pass coming to assist with the quality of the game and then it's the balancing with the spirit of generosity and fun in the game with fun prevailing over everything else. Player power, rewards are a few of the things that's being looked at. Every minute you play uh, they want you to be having fun and you feel that every minute you play you feel rewarded as well and they want to bring that you know time played versus rewards incentive back. Difficulty and scaling will be addressed as well with TU10. PvP changes will be coming as well specifically balancing of PvP. It's a general pass coming for the whole game. There's a there's a number of uh, stuff that's changed. There's a lot of changes and it should take uh, all of the changes done in previous updates and connect everything in 
the right way. They then addressed the question. Uh, I believe someone said something along the lines of, uh, well, I find challenging fun, um, so you know we don't want nerfs to, to difficulty and stuff like that. And they said that their intention is not to make everything easier. It's the frustrations that they really want to address. It's the unfairness and power of the agent that they want to bring back rather than you just feel unbelievably weak against uh, NPCs. Uh, with that said, they don't want to dumb, dumb it down. And they don't want to make the content that much easier because they, they feel as though the, the difficulty currently is is okay it's just really the frustrations surrounding that is really the the main problem they then passed it on to nikki who was kind of like almost like the numbers guy but he's been working on specific parts of tu10 and he wanted to address those so firstly nikki said he's very happy about doing a pts it makes a lot of sense with the vast amount of changes coming and i have to agree a pts more often than not, has done better for the game rather than worse. So that's good. Then they went on to specifics. So basically, Nikki says he's got a condensed list of changes for phase one of PTS. There is still stuff in the works for phase two. Uh, first one was exotic availability, and they inserted this uh, slide, which you can see on screen now. So they said, the first question is, how do you get them? Well, changes are being made to make it simpler. Every, ex every exotic has its own specific source and then you have a general source. Exotics with Warlords are only unique sources currently, but this is gonna change with a PTS and going into TU10, they will actually go into the general sources. So targeted loot, heroic legendary final bosses, ray bosses and from exotic caches which is good news there are some exceptions the raid exotics and bighorn will only be available from their unique sources so that's the eagle bearer and the bighorn the new raid will have two uh, exotics coming so again they'll only be available from the raid crafting exotics will remain uh, the same and once unlocked uh, will go into the general sources so that's something like the nemesis for example there is two season exotics coming with season two as well. Um, that's not inside the raid, that's just an extra two exotics. These are acquired through the season reward track and once acquired, will go into the general sources. All season two stuff coming with the PTS. Even the raid two stuff will be available to try out. So that's gear, weapons, etc. A special vendor will be available to get this stuff. Uh, new, there's gonna be a new brand, there's new named items, new exotics and new gear sets. Uh, I'll be honest guys, when I heard that, I wasn't, sh I'm okay with probably the new brand, new named items um, and, and stuff, but when it comes to the raid exotics and the raid gear sets, I know why they're doing it because they want to make sure it's good and they wanna make sure people actually wanna get it but I, I just don't know if I like the idea of giving that to everyone before you get there. You know, you're already gonna know what it is before you even play the raid. I'm not so sure about that. Let me know what you guys think about that in the comments down below. Moving on, they said, how do players give feedback on the PTS? Well, the PTS for, uh, forums will be open on the Ubisoft forum, so you can do that there. I imagine there'll be Reddit posts where you can do it as well. I imagine there'll be a way to do it on Twitter. Um, they said that almost all weapons are gonna be buffed uh, with uh, the PTS and with TU10, so you'll be able to see those buffed. They don't have specific numbers yet. The patch notes are not available quite yet. They said that Bruce has done a big pass on the weapon handling stat. All details will be included in the patch notes. Again, I think this is excellent news. I wonder what he's done with it. Uh, we'll have to wait and see, I guess. Uh, they've not only looked at NPC nerfs when it comes to TU10, but they decided to increase the player power. They wanted to bring back that player power fantasy, and I have to agree that's something the game has been missing for some time. They said that every single assault rifle is receiving a buff, along with every single SMG. There are gonna be a few nerfs here and there for outliers, but they wanted to bring all weapons in line. The M1A, is being nerfed a little. We knew this was gonna happen anyway, but the idea was to bring everything up to almost the power of what the M1A was. So it's only gonna be a very minor nerf to the M1A. Um, basically all other weapons are then gonna be brought up to the M1A power. Gear sets have been changed to make more sense with the mechanics and streamline a bit. So it's not just about increasing numbers, but there's gonna be changes to those gear sets so they become easier to use and also give you more power because you can use them more often or more easier. The question was asked, when are the patch notes out? Well, they're still being worked on, and it will probably be on Friday. Uh, they said that Legendary will be made more rewarding. There's a change for Phase 1 PTS to increase the loot drop chance for veterans and elites, so you will walk away with more stuff from doing Legendary activities. Another change is coming with Phase 2 of the PTS, and what they're doing with this is they're looking at the role distribution um, to see if there's a way they can make it more lucrative, but this is also going to be across all difficulties they're being, this is being looked at. All purple 
Pullu is being removed for higher difficulties. A big pass on control points with phase one of the PTS. They've removed all the regular gear and weapon containers from those control points and instead they've put everything from there into the supply crate which scales with the control point of the level so instead of getting maybe two or three items from the big crate you're probably going to get somewhere like six seven eight items from that crate instead but those are going to be scaled to uh, the level that you're playing on the mission crates are being worked on for phase two uh, they said about pvp there are changes coming with pvp for tu10 and what they need players to do with phase one of the pts is to go into pvp and actually give feedback on those changes that have been made the the general idea for pvp at the moment is to increase the time to kill because they believe it's too quick and they want to make it so it's a bit longer they then went on to show on the the new uh, hill league which went live yesterday there's been some changes made to the season end date the season's going to be extended a further two weeks uh because of t10 uh, and the pts in mind uh there's going to be a named item drop chance increase i believe it was only said in passing but i believe that's what's coming there's a pass on vendors um, they want to make sure that they no longer sell purple gear. Uh, they want to increase the item power that's being sold as well. And they are adding named items to all of the vendors as well. Uh, there will be a slight increase in price for the named items. Uh, DZ vendors will have a chance to sell DZ specific named items as well. Exotic caches and projects. The shade requisition project has been overhauled. And they've added another weekly uh, ex uh, projects on top of that these will now be at level 40 with new requirements uh, these will all reward you with an exotic cache uh, so the shade requisition when that's being overhauled will reward you with an exotic cache the other project is a legendary completion project for the week which will give you an exotic cache as well uh, this one will only show up if you've completed a legendary uh, before i've said about this before i think this is uh, probably a good thing my only reservation and i might touch upon this on friday is that there appears to be a lot of sources to get exotics now uh, and my concern is that we're going to run out of content too quickly if that makes sense uh, they are adding back the field proficiency uh, when you complete a season so each level uh, will be at the same as it was how it worked with uh, world tier 5 after you uh, season level 100 then every single level you'll get you'll get a field proficiency and I, I forgot to say they are doing a big pass coming with exotics in phase 2 of the PTS for TU10 as well and then lastly um they said they want to address the elephant in the room what's happening with crafting it appears to be a question that come up uh, they said this is, again is being looked at they want to raise both minimum and maximum attribute roles this is being worked on for phase two of the pts they want it to be more generous but not the go-to place to get the best gear they don't want it to become a craft simulator and i completely understand that but that's it for today's uh, state of the game guys hopefully you did enjoy these this is not uh, anywhere near the amount of stuff uh, that's actually coming there's a lot more i believe that's actually coming uh, with tu10 this appears to be quite a huge update and i'm really excited to check it out i don't know if i'm going to be able to actually play the P uh, the pts on pc i do have it on pc but i've not leveled up a character i'll have to see if i can if i can i will if i can't then don't worry i will make sure i get all the news when other people post it on reddit and all that sort of good stuff thanks very much for watching guys until the next one epic out